So check it out guys. Got a laser level here. I don't know how well you'll be able to see this. This red line coming down the guitar. But I have it centered up. Uh, it may not look centered from the camera angle, but the red line is. And there you can see we are dead center of the bridge. It might be just a tiny bit off. I'm just sizing the neck up here right now. And uh Checking out uh, how the dovetail joint fits and uh, how center we still are. The joint fits very tight. Have this clamp on here just to hold it in place. Now I might use that to glue the neck back on to help secure it and hold it center. But there you can see it. And maybe turn the lights off you can see it better. And uh, there you can see we are dead center. Well, here we go, folks. Welcome back again to another installment of the house that never sleeps. Today we're going to glue the brick, the bridge. We're going to glue the neck, this K neck, back onto this Harmony guitar body. Uh, that's the reason all those shims are put in here because. They did that to make the dovetail joint fit. Now, obviously, the Harmony uh, dovetail joint was a lot smaller joint than the joint they used in the, uh, or the K, the K dovetail was a lot smaller joint than they used in the Harmony uh, dovetail joint. So they put a bunch of shims in there, and I'll put some more shims on the uh, tenon of this joint to get it to fit as tightly as I possibly could. And it fits up good. Everything is centered well now. I made a shim for the uh, under the fretboard extension, and uh, I got glue. I got brush. I've got wet cloths. I have paper towels, um, clamps. I think I have everything I need here now, all together right here within reaching distance. There's always something that you forgot it usually. Anyways, we'll bring the camera over here closer and uh, try to get you some kind of a view of this and let's glue the neck on this thing Woo! The boogity bob. you might be wondering why the tape and this uh, band clamp right here I'll show you that whenever we get to it We're, it's going to be a few minutes though because we got to work our way up to that there's a reason for that it's just a uh, a backup precaution that I'm going to take. I wouldn't have to. I do it sometimes and sometimes not. And I'll do it when I think of it, put it that way. So, let's just get this covered first. And get ready to rock and roll. Hope everyone's doing well. This is going to make a fine little guitar for someone and should be very good guitar for a very long time. It should last someone a very, very long time to come. Brand new neck reset. I got to get more glue back in there. There we go. And this side. I don't think it's quite enough. I've been accused of using too much glue before. <laughs> Can you imagine that? But my motto is, you know, if you use too much glue, you can always like to squeeze out away. You cannot, however, always go back and uh, add more glue if you don't have enough. So, you know, I think it's better to use too much up front than it is to use too little. And we just want to coat this entire thing with glue and all of this. I doubt you can even see what's going on. I'll show you the best I can. And spread it all everywhere. 
within that joint. And grip it everywhere too while you're at it. That's always a lot of good fun. That's why we have glue rags all over the place. I'm going to wipe this off a little bit before I just get it smeared out fairly even every place that I can. And I think we're set. I need to wipe some of this off. Uh, got glue everywhere, man. Guitar neck reset. Now, This strap is the one I was talking about. And all that's for is to kind of help hold that in place while I uh, get a couple of these on it. One right here. And I'm going to look at that. One just opposite of that, except down a little bit lower. And we got some serious squeeze out going on right here. Actually, there's what we need. A little short screw, a long screwdriver with a tiny head really comes in handy for getting in those tight places to get squeeze out wiped away. And in good time, I might add. Do that over here too. Now, one very important factor I should mention here is getting. Our center line exactly in the center, okay? And I'm going to use a thread for this. What I'm going to do is just wrap like I've showed you before, wrap it around the uh, guitar strap end pin, a uh, piece of tape, maybe it would be nice. to hold that in place and we want to make sure I'm going to take this loose for a minute make sure we are dead center with this neck and it looks like we are <sighs> okay this is good well my I'm going to have to loosen this one just for a minute too. Until I can be absolutely sure this neck is centered. This is a very important step, folks. It pays to take the extra precaution, take the extra time, the extra step, and just make absolutely sure that you're centered up. And we are. It looks good. I'm going to go ahead and Clamp this other one, I think. And I got some more squeeze out happening. You really need about six hands when you do this, especially if your hands are like mine. <laughs> it pays, believe me. It makes life much easier if you got more hands. Oh shit! Well, if you have hands too that work, usually is good. Mine used to work, they don't so much anymore. <laughs> you all know about that, I'm sure. So there's our thread technique. I'll check that again a little later on. I want to make sure we're still. Yeah, man, looks good. Excellent. That is an excellent fit on that joint. Now. 
that off just a wee bit more. Got more squeeze out. You get rid of that before it becomes run out. I know you probably can't see shit. It's usually the case. I'm going to rig up a like a sky cam type of thing here one day. Sometimes I do set the camera up here on a tripod and get a sky cam like view. But it's right in the way. When I do that, the camera is always right in the way. So, it doesn't always work out in my favor, if you know what I mean. Okay, it all looks good. And one more tiny clamp now to go. Let's get that out of the way. I'm going to put a couple blocks right here. And we're going to put a little clamp right here on the end of the fretboard extension. Try to get a little bit more squeeze out here if possible. Oh, yeah. Yeah, baby, we're getting it. You can't see it, <laughs> but it's there. Just the same. And this is good. This is good. Come on, finish it, Bird! Come on, finish that shit! But yeah, we're the, uh, like I said, the K dovetail. Part of the dovetail that's on the neck, the tenon was much, much smaller than uh, the dovetail of the guitar body. And someone had tried to resize that, make it fit and make it work. And they did pretty good as far as, you know, fitting the joint up, but they had the, the wrong angle on that neck, big time. Big time wrong angle. Yes, sir, but it's a good fit, man. She bit right up. And on both sides. So we're good. We are good there. Uh, let me make sure everything's plenty tight. Get this out of here before something bad happens. Yeah, we just got more squeeze out there. So get that back. Should have just uh, did that before I wiped the squeeze out of the way, but it would have been smarter. Sometimes I get the cameras rolling and man, it's really easy to forget things. Forget to do things that you're supposed to do. <laughs> nice shot in the back of my head, I know. Yeah. Just, you know, like, there's no time to visit right now. <laughs> Come back later and we'll visit then. <laughs> Once everything is set up and done. I just got more squeeze out, out of that puppy. It's about as tight as I want to go with it right now. Yeah, that's good. Excellent. A little bit more over here on this side now. And then, I will bring you over here and give you a free shot. What do you think of that, folks? Everybody likes a free shot now and then, do they not? Woo! The book of the ball. I'm telling you. Alright, let me look at it again. Yes, sir. I like what I'm seeing. I do see a little tiny bit of squeeze out I gotta get. And it's right under that jack, under that clamp. Of all places it would be, wouldn't it? I may have got it. Yep, I think so. Give it this number one more time. The Gilder's going to be very happy with this guitar. Compared to how it played before, the action was uh, really crept up on it. Very hard to play. But I think now we're going to be 
very much easier to play. So there we go. We're set up. Everything's good. Everything looks good so far. Except more squeeze out down here. I didn't even get that. i get it now. No time like the present, eh? Eh? And there we go. So hold on. I'll get the camera, bring you over closer, and we'll have a look. The old harmony is going to live again. I gotta make a bone saddle for it yet. Had to knock the nut out of it. Uh, yeah, this this uh, band clamp. Like I say, the only reason I used it was to get glue on the thing, the joint, get it locked into position, and then squeeze it, you know, up tight against the body of the guitar. Of course, the dovetail does that as you shove it down in. It pulls the neck tight against the body. That's one of the good things about a dovetail joint. The tighter you squeeze it, uh, the better it fits, the tighter it fits. If I can get you a shot inside of here, I don't know if I can hold this camera still enough or not. Probably not. I see some more squeeze out coming out down there. And the camera is not going to focus. But you can see what a good fit we have there. Now, I don't know if you can see it. I made a shim under here. I should have showed you that before I put it together, probably, idiot. Anyways, I had to cut a shim to go under the fretboard extension there to keep that fretboard flat and level with the rest of the neck. And you can't see it too good here. Maybe a little bit. I made it out of maple. And uh, I stained the wood. It was uh, There wasn't any finish or anything. It was just bare wood. And I stained it black to match the rest of this, you know, you know with the guitar neck. If you look up here, you see some of that stain is coming off. It just wears off over time. And that's the way this down here was. So I kind of darkened it all up a little bit to make it look better. You know, you don't want to just a bare wood shim sticking out there in plain view. So fix that so it doesn't look as obvious. Fingerprints all over this guitar. Like I say, you got to make a saddle for it. I have a... Uh, Actually, I have a bone blank. I've already started. I've got it cut just the right width for that. But I got to work it down and all that. That's a that's another uh, couple hours or hour anyway, at least. But uh, I think the nut is going to be okay. Uh, like I say, I had to knock it out because I got a really long straight edge I needed to use. At one point, the nut was in the way, so I just knocked it out. And I'm going to put the original, the same nut back in it. I don't know if it's, it probably is the original for this K neck. It's a funky little nut. Very small and very thin. And it goes just like so. See how small that nut is? But I, we had the proper string height up here. So I want to use that nut if I can because you can see the footprint of it there, you know, where it sits. I won't have to change anything there when I glue it back in. I should be able just to glue the nut in and uh, be good to go. So there we go, folks. Neck reset. And that's what she looks like as of right now. I'll give that 48 hours. And uh, come back and take the... I may start uh, whittling out that, that saddle in the meantime. But that's got to set. This has got to set for at least 48 hours. And then I'll come back and take all this crap off of it, let it breathe again. And we'll start putting the saddle and strings and nut and all the fun stuff back on it. See what this baby sounds like. And uh, I don't know, you might see a Gibson video before you see another one on this guitar. Because I wait two days. I can be working on a Gibson, you know, in those two days while I wait for this one. Anyways, that's what's happening at the house. <laughs> Never sleeps. Hold on. Well, I can say we'll leave that now for 24 hours. Just leave it sit. Or 48 hours, actually. Come back and remove all this crap. And uh, I might work some on that Gibson guitar. Start tearing it down as we wait. Or I may go ahead and, and cut, finish cutting the saddle out for this. I could go ahead, I guess, and glue the nut back in it. And uh, it won't be very long now. 
next video we'll probably be stringing it up maybe setting the thing up even then who knows well just looking at these keys they're very loose you hear that that's the pegs all of them except one the fourth string is tight and it turns really easy probably just a screw on the back loose but I go over that's something I go over and check everything anyway when I set a guitar up or work on it I just check the keys make sure they're all everything's tight that every screw on it definitely be tightening those up and lubing those keys but yeah man um, the tape, by the way, was to hold this band up near the top or the center of the guitar until, you know, while it was loose. It holds itself once you tighten it up. The tape was just to hold the band there until I tightened it up. And like I say, it's, I could probably take it off now. It'd be hard to get out with these clamps here because I just leave it on there. I only use it to hold the thing securely together enough. A lot of times when you glue two things together and you clamp it, it'll, it tries to move. It can be very slippery, especially fretboards. So, the idea I was thinking was, you know, get everything glued up, get the, the uh, neck into the joint, and tighten this up just enough to hold it there until I could take a straight edge. And, I don't know if I showed the straight edge part or not, check the uh, plane of the uh, fretboard with the plane of the bridge, and also check with the string like I showed you there to make sure we were centered. Once I was okay with that, then the rest of the clamps go on. So that's what's going on there. So uh, I guess I'll see you in, well, I'll probably see you again before at uh, 48 hours, but uh, next time you see this guitar, it'll be 48 hours from now. Had a little uh, incident, or accident, I should say, yesterday, or day before yesterday. I broke my toe, man, on my left foot. I guess the, the toe beside the big toe, I guess you would call it your index toe. I don't know. But I, I didn't go to the doctor or anything, but it's broke. There's no question about that. I was carrying my computer. I was going to take it up and blow the dust out of it. I had one of these little gates up in the door over here to keep the dogs in or out. And it was up. And, of course, I was carrying a computer. Couldn't see it. Barefoot. Bam! Man into the thing. And I was hurrying. And uh, I went ahead and went up and blew all the dust out of the computer. It hurt like hell. I could barely walk. I finally got back to the house with it. And I set the computer down, and I looked at it, and it was uh, like a rope, man. I could bend it to side to side, or straight up, or any direction, all directions. And I knew then it was broke. And it had already started swelling up, and now my whole foot swelled up. But uh, I barely walk on it. I mean, <laughs> it's just one thing after the other at the house. But uh, that's just another obstacle. Uh, like today was a beautiful day. I should be outside doing something. But, uh, you know, it makes for good excuses to stay in the house that never sleeps and work on guitars. So there you go. Wish me well. Cheers to you. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on a Gibson fix or on this one again soon or maybe something else. Who knows? Cheers. Thanks for watching. Woo! The Boogity Ball.